they may look young, but they don't know how to click a link. Hey, for shit. we uh, <laughs> we click the button. Oh yeah, and we're live. We're All live. Right. Yeah. All right, hey everybody. Um, you're tuning in on the uh, the Dale Jr. Uh, or <laughs> you're tuning in on the Dirty Mo Media YouTube page. Appreciate it, uh, Andrew and the guys back there. Finally found the button to <laughs> hit, hit and get us live, and uh, we got some Ash Jr. on deck. Andrew's been gathering all of your questions that you've been sending to at Xfinity Racing on Twitter. Uh, thank you, Xfinity, for everything you do for us. But uh, we got some good ones on deck. They've been great. They've been great this year. I don't know whether it's Andrew or what. But um, and you guys obviously have to ask the questions, so um, let's get started. Yeah, and uh, we I'm glad we clicked the right button because Travis almost closed the entire Yikes. YouTube browser out. <laughs> uh, but this first question coming from Michael: uh, How much fun did you have running around with Larry or like AKA Loud in the Lobster this weekend? That was fun. You know, I never won a race at New Hampshire. Had some good, good, uh, good races. Apparently, with Truex winning, it puts me back into the lead of the person that's led the most laps without a win. I'm not sure if that's statistics real, <laughs> but if you're not a winner, winner, like if you haven't won a race there, it's not a bad statistic. Yeah, it just says you ran up front quite a bit. I, th I remember leading some laps there, running pretty good. But uh, let's go rewrite the bio, please. Uh, yeah. Repost that on Dillinger.com. <laughs> yeah, we got a new accolade to I know. be proud about. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take anything I can get. Um, <laughs> anyways, Larry, so that's a great conversation, man. Listen to this. I ain't falling for this. So this lobster, right? There's a there's this weird equation for figuring out the age. Of a lobster. And it's like their weight <laughs> times four plus three years, some weird shit. So this lobster's either anywhere between 60 and 70 years old. All right? Wow. This lobster is anywhere from 60 and 70 years old. And I talked to the people that own the restaurant where he is kept. And they have to find him. They have to go actively find this lobster. Right, they spend months looking for the the one of size that they can get, and then go they go get him, bring him up to their tank. He lives in their tank till the race. He comes out, he rides around in a cooler. He comes out for the for you know we we had him in the TV booth. He goes to Victory Lane, and then they 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 cook him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then he gets cooked. The inevitable end yeah. of the lobster. What a yeah. good life, though. And so um, <laughs> apparently. Um, one year, Kurt Busch won, and I think uh, his first wife insisted that it be released back into the sea, which which uh, apparently kills it immediately. Mm. So, um, or it doesn't last very long, right, in the sea uh, after it's uh, being raised in in this in this habitat. But uh, that it's however the guy's just telling me he's like, man, she insisted. We were like, hey, it's not gonna it's gonna last a couple of days, and they're like, anyways. So. Uh, and I heard that this giant lobster tastes the same as the little regular lobster, right? So on TV for Countdown to Green Sunday, we had the big guy in there and a regular lobster. Um, and they were like, hey, man, the, it tastes the same. You'd think it might be different, t texture or whatever. Yeah, like deer. Deer, the bigger the deer, the tougher the meat. Okay. The, yeah. I, I was happy to hear that it tastes the same. And so um, uh, anyways, my problem with all of this, is that they insist on calling this lobster Loudon. That of, uh, of all the problems you would have, that's the one? Well, <laughs> it's horse shit. Okay, tell us why. Because he's 60 years old. So he shouldn't be called Loudon. He was not named, I mean, was he? You, you want to call him by his original name? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it damn sure wasn't Loudon. <laughs> 60 years ago? Yeah. I mean, he's getting this loud. He, you know, he, it's disrespectful. He's getting this loud and he's getting this loud name. What in the last six months? <laughs> Apparently, the last forty-eight hours. Yeah. No, no, they went and found him. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, man, guess what? We're taking you to New Hampshire. New name. You got a new name, man. It's right. loud and it's not. It's not a good thing." <laughs> Um, that's unfortunately, like re unfortunately for you, your end is near. It's like renaming grandpa at the wake. Uh, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Abe is not his name anymore. Yeah. We're calling him Loudon. If anybody ever tries to name you Loudon, man, turn or yeah. run. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead and give your last rights. The end is near. <laughs> so we're sitting up there and I'm like, they're like, yeah, man. 
they're get, we're getting ready to go on air, and they're like, his name's Loud, and I'm like, I ain't calling him Loud. No poor <laughs> shit. I'm like, his name's Larry or something. That's what I'm calling him. I make my own damn decisions. So you renamed him. Yes. But probably not his original name. Didn't matter. Hypocrite. Yep. Yeah. No. He, I wasn't going there. I wasn't going with the flow. Wow. This yeah. is the, what else? This is when you know there was a rain delay. By the way, <laughs> I'm gonna tell when, you, it felt good not to not to name not to call him loud on felt, air. Felt I good about I wasn't going with that. Mm. Um. Anyways, did we answer the question? <laughs> 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 that was uh. It was fun. I'm a t- dude. The thing. Listen, Brad Kozlowski says they're the bugs of the sea. I mean, I can see it when you get that up close to it. He's hail, he's held he's held one, so he should know. But uh, you know, usually you get you order lobster, you get the tail; it's already cooked. You don't have to look at the thing, right? And so uh, I'm holding him, and he, they move so slow and deliberate, you know. And it's this weird, weird thing. And in down in his like you're holding him, right? And you're looking down in his face, and all kinds of little things are moving around and carrying on. And you're like, this is the strangest beast. Yeah. But anyhow, and. <clears throat> I'm like, hey, we didn't plan this. This wasn't like plan, plan. We decided it on the spot. Burton and I were like, hey, man, they're coming to us at the very last segment. We did a half hour countdown to green at 2 o'clock on Sunday, even though there wasn't a race. We, we were doing a countdown to green anyways. In the last segment of the show, the last five minutes, they're going to come back to me and Burton. We're going to give a final thoughts about something, right? <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I said, hey, Burton, I'm going to dip. I'm going to get the lobster, and I'm going into their booth. So when they come to us, it'll be just you, and you s- toss it back to them as I walk in, and uh, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna bring it in there, right, and uh, see if any of them freak out. They don't freak out, but st- <laughs> uh, Latar's standing there, and he's from Maine. He's ate lops- lobster all his life. Won't eat it now because he's had so much when he was younger. Uh, he's holding his m- sick mite, and I'm like. I walk it in there. I'm like, hey, yeah, here. And my and Latar's like, yeah, I've got a sick mic. I'm not going to hold. I'm like, put the damn mic down. <laughs> I walked in here. We're on live television. Hold the freaking lobster. You're not getting away with this. And uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. Hold, puts the sick mic down. It's kind of funny. But um, it was fun. And it's a really, really big animal. 22 pounds. Uh, and so... Somebody had it. There was a lot of uh, lobster rolls to be had, I guess, for Truex and his crew. There you go. Well, you damn sure answered the question yeah. and then some. <clears throat> that one, that was great. Yeah. Um, you know, the the lobster being kind of a interesting marquee trophy for New Hampshire, mm-hmm. this next question um, is asking kind of about the trophies that you have. Obviously, you've got a lot of them. Do you, how many do you have in your house, and, like, what are the ones oh. that you have displayed? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple, one or two in here, and there's a lot upstairs at Junior Motorsports. Um, all of my, all of my um, most popular driver awards are in this building, um, on different pedestals around, and um, in I have a shop uh, on my property that's full of trophies. Some are Ralph Earnhardt's um, trophies are in there as well. And in the house, the clock from Martinsville, the trophy from Bristol from 2004, both of my Xfinity Series championship trophies, both of my Daytona 500 trophies, um, Chicago win is there, Michigan win is there, Atlanta win is there, and... uh, uh, there's a few more. Anyways, um, probably about a third of my cup wins and, two, yeah. and both of my Xfinity Trophy Series championship trophies <coughs> are at the house. And so, yeah, that's it. That's a good lineup. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, we got time for one more. <clears throat> and uh, this question's coming from Lane. Uh, you know, Truex – is still he even said yesterday that he's not not, sure about returning in 2024 i texted him last night i heard that he was uh gonna buy a fishing boat yeah and somehow that's factoring into the decision well he brought it in oh yeah so he said he um 
he's been putting off buying this fishing boat for like five, six years, yep. and he's like not good at making big decisions. So he finally, I think, is gonna buy yep. the fishing boat. But I guess the, the the question was, what do you think he'll do, and, and what do you hope happens in twenty twenty four? I hope he races. Um, I, me and Truex, I I consider us to be close pals, and um, I, um, man, I, I begged Rick Hendrick to hire him uh, when he was when he was between drivers. I don't, I can't remember if it was um, Mark leaving uh, or Casey leaving, but <clears throat> there was a there was a time when I I I had a hard time convincing. Uh, Rick to to change the route he was going down and also to understand just what kind of a driver Martin was and um, uh, that would have been pretty cool to see him go there but he ends up right going down this other route and honestly man I think there's so much to be appreciated because Martin ends up you know Martin ends up in a bad situation with with uh, how the Michael Watcher thing falls apart he has to basically relegate down uh, uh, to a car and help that program that was in a bit of a rebuild, right? Um, Kurt Busch had been a part of improving Furniture Row, and it was on the upswing when Martin got there. And um, he Martin continued to take it to the next level. They win a championship with their association with Gibbs. Cole Pern is a massive role has a massive role in the success in that team which I wish Cole was still part of what, what was going on in our sport because he was not only incredible uh, as a crew chief, but witty and fun, um, just a great personality uh, who had a really unique perspective on the sport. Um, but Truex, you know, kind of helped, kind of, you know, I got to give him a lot of credit, man. He was in a crossroads where he could he could have mentally and emotionally torpedoed his career or – turned the corner and went the right way, and he goes the right way. Takes a lot of guts and mental toughness uh, to do what he did to climb out of that hole and become a champion. And uh, now he's, you know, won 30-some races. Yeah. Imagine if he had been in this type of situation his entire career. You know, he's literally, literally only done most of all this in the back half. He's as good as he ever was. I hate to see him stop. But at the same time, man, I mean, if he's if he quits and <laughs> goes and fishes every day uh, off the in the Gulf Coast, I, I, he, that's a hell of a thing, right? Yeah. To go out on top. Um, I texted him last night. I said, "What boat?" Because I'd read about the boat, and uh, he sent me a picture of it, and um, it's beautiful. You know, it's just you know people would look at it and go, "Yep, yeah, that's a that's a fishing boat, center console." Fishing boat. Nothing. This ain't no, you know, yacht. It ain't no, you know, cabin cruiser or nothing like that. It's just a center console, and he just wants to go fish. He loves it, and he's a sportsman. He's an outdoorsman, massive in hunting and and fishing. Loves to be in the be on in the outdoors every day. Um, he fits a very, you know, he fits he fits a very popular mold for NASCAR drivers, right? I think he's more of an outdoorsman than Dad ever was. Um, I think he's, you know, even though he's from New Jersey, he just sort of – he reminds me a lot of the old guard, you know, and the way they, they live their – they live their lives away from the racetrack. He certainly isn't, like, married to, to his job every single day. He goes and does what he wants, fishes and carries on and travels. And I don't know, I'm getting into the weeds here, but if we lost Martin – We'd be losing a really cool personality and a very unique uh, person that's fun to pull for. I know that he's ruffled some feathers with some comments in the past about, you know, especially with Joe Logano, he won the battle, but he won't win the war. And then they go to Homestead and he loses the war to Joey. Um, I know all that did some, you know, changed people's minds about Martin at some at, at points, and I could read that in social media and so forth. Um, but dang, man, I mean, man, a few words when he speaks, he's genuinely has something to say that he, that matters to him and he a hell of a race car driver. Uh, and so, but if he wants to go fish, go fish. Yeah. He's definitely earned it 
and I don't know how much more he could do. You know, does he stick around and grind out a couple more years for a few more wins? And even if he wins a championship this year, I don't know if he that keeps him around. It'll be uh, interesting to see what he does. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it will. We're all waiting, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. That's a good place to uh, mark this Ash Jr. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. That's good. It's some another great round of questions, and we had a lot of fun uh, with those. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, supporting everything we do here at Dirty Mo Media, and uh, we're working really, really hard across the board trying to get out the next episode of the Seventy Nine Podcast. And uh, we got a we got a guest coming in this week, so we're going to have a guest interview as well. Uh, so it's a big week for us here at the Dale Jr. Download. Appreciate everybody for supporting us again, and uh, have a great week. And we're out. Um, uh, we'll do an episode close and then 